Good morning, everyone. Today is Saturday, December 4th, 2021. This is Coffee and Crypto. I wasn't going to do a show this morning because I was thinking the market is so damn ugly. I also have some obligations. I have a funeral to go to, and, and worse than that, I'm obligated to go have dinner with my in laws. I'm, I'm half kidding. Uh, <laughs> anyway, but because it's so ugly, it's like, well, why do you need me to tell you that it's ugly? And but the more thought about it is you don't need me when the market's going straight up. And lately I've been a super bull, as you know, so excited. Like, hey, guys, you got to check this thing out. These things are just going straight up. And it's it's just like, uh, I don't want to say taking candy from the from a baby because a lot of money management, a lot of work goes into it. But in some cases, it's pretty easy. And if you go in and look at some of the older presentations that I've done, at least in one or two cases, within minutes, some of these things were hitting the IPT. Anyway, I think you need someone like me more when things are ugly than when things are going well. Because when things are going well, if you're a, a good trader, you don't get too caught up and, don't, and not too full of yourself. That trading psychology rears its ugly head, right? You could just, in a lot of cases, buy them as they're going up and use a healthy dose of money management. So let's, let's take a look at the markets real quick. And one thing I've been thinking about, and I think I mentioned this recently, is what would happen if you use Bitcoin as a bit of a barometer, kind of like, I guess you would view the S&P 500. And when Bitcoin is not doing so hot, maybe lighten up on all the shitcoin trading, the altcoin trading, S-H-Y-T trading. One thing that's kind of interesting with Bitcoin, I know you want to party with me, is back here we had a 230 EMA breakout system. The short would have been right here. Now, it did go up and kind of tag that 30 EMA, but notice it never did get above it. It certainly never closed above it. And now it's beginning to implode again. So I guess the second signal would actually be below this low, believe it or not. No, nope, hang on right here. Bar one, bar two. Remember, it's just two bars of Landry light, meaning that the highs are less than the moving average. And then you look to get in below the low of the second bar. And look at that. So that would have been a re-trigger right there. A little tiny Elvis just... just uh, Slipped out. Look, look at that bar. It's huge. But you can see, anyway, from this first signal way back here, bar one, bar two, trigger right here. Or maybe a more liberal trigger would have been like in here somewhere. For the most part, it's gone down. Now, one dangerous thing to do, and I actually did take a trade a few minutes ago because I was looking at Bitcoin. But a dangerous thing to do, I think, would be to get a little caught up and maybe try this on a 15 minute basis. But Bitcoin is still pretty oversold in here. And you can see you've got two bars of Landry light in here so far. And so the entry would be above this high after this 15 minute bar completes and or if this makes a new high above that. But I, I think I'd hold off on that kind of trading for now. I'd like to show you that just so you can kind of watch it for S and G's. Now, let me show you something. When I came in this morning and I sorted by well, first of all, the ones that are red are ones that I have some residual positions left over. Some of these I was free rolling in really nicely, like Luna was just amazing. And you could see it, it tailed off really incredibly uh, bad overnight. And I, I ended up with a residual position left over. So I have a stop in place on that. But you can see a lot of these obviously tailed lower overnight. Red means that I'm, I have a stop in place. And not an initial profit target because I might have some residuals or whatever left over. Cyan means I'm free rolling. Now, my free rolling list was huge a couple days ago and it was pretty amazing and I was really getting excited. And, you know, I tell you, whenever you feel that, <laughs> if you've been trading for more than a few weeks, you probably know. Whenever you feel that, you know it's probably quickly coming to an end. But somehow I survived this move here. Now, one thing before we get into the relative strength, one thing that this correction may give us is we may end up in a market where we move back to the core methodology. So what do I mean by that? Well, back here, you've got a nice Landry light, nice little pullback to the EMA, takes off, nice little pullback again. Didn't quite get the EMA, but we play pullbacks too, right? Nice little thrust higher. And in some cases, my favorite thing to do is to A, have a setup, and then B, have the pair show up high on the relative strength list. And I'll flesh that out in just one second. That, that to me is like a double whammy and can work really well. But now I'm wondering what this correction is, do we go back to the core methodology or focus mostly on the core methodology? And I think that would be a hell of a lot easier to trade 
than watching these things 24 hours a day and trying to play the hottest pair all the time, playing a little hot potato or pretty girl swap and whatever we call it. And I've talked about a lot about that in prior presentations. So go ahead and watch that, both in, uh, or in my Coffee and Crypto and in the Trading Simplified shows and in the Week of Charts. And by the way, watch the Week of Charts if you haven't already done so. I flesh out a lot of these concepts there. Now, first thing I like to do when I come in after I see what happened is I like to sort by percent change. And let's do that. So here's one way up here. This one looks a little thin. I mean, it's tempting to just jump in, but given the nature of the rest of the market right now, and it does look a little thin, and that's something I haven't solved for yet, in, and that is volume. And if you guys have any, any ideas on that, uh, leave a comment below. If you're in Facebook uh, and you're watching this, uh, leave a comment there. We could maybe noodle with it a little bit. And I haven't worked too hard on it because everything's been working so well. It's kind of like I don't want to jinx it. But now you can see that what's interesting is some of the ones that are top of the list are actually short. So see this S here? You can actually buy this token or coin, whatever it is. And if it goes, if the token itself goes down, then this goes up. And you can see up 59% overnight. So Adam obviously got whacked. Here's one that would look great, right? If you were just seeing it, but that's actually a short, that's EOS. So that got whacked overnight. It looks like Litecoin got whacked overnight, coming off a little bit in here matic one that i uh, got long in the weekend charts failed miserably you know at first guru ever to show you a losing trade right <laughs> anyway so a lot of the ones high in the list or shorts so that tells you right there that the market is not good now notice it tailed off quite a bit so that might be maybe the correction's over i don't know let the let the market tell you where to go soul i was long that one recently so stopped out of that so it was a pretty ugly night overall, and I feel like now's the time to tread lightly on, on getting back in. So as we go through these, you can see, again, a lot of ugliness out there. Now, one thing I did in the week of charts is I started with the ones that were just up a little bit because you're not going to buy them unless they're up a little bit, right, and then see where they go. So this would be a setup right here. I'm going to put this as blue. So I'll keep an eye on that. Nice little uh, perfect. This is almost textbook pullback to the 30 EMA. In fact, I'm going to put this one as green because I might want to go after it. So it's like this morning I came in here and I'm like, man, I never want to trade another shitcoin again in my life. And then after I start looking at these charts and seeing some of these setups in here, some TKOs, some pullbacks to the EMA, and just pullbacks in general, I'm, I'm beginning to think, well, maybe I could go in and take a few of these and I front ran one a little while ago and I'll show you that one in just one second but anyway kind of ugly as you can see and oh by the way one thing that I've been preaching lately is don't buy anything if you don't learn anything from what I'm saying here not that I'm the grand poobah but don't buy anything as long as it's underneath the 30 EMA and look at how many of these things are just not to make a pun but look how many shit coins are absolute crap by trading below the 30 EMA. And you can see that could keep you out of a tremendous amount of trouble. This one's a little unorthodox. It, it de does look a little thin. It's kind of wild and crazy, but it did pull back to that 30, quite a few days of this pullback. But this is kind of interesting. I'll go ahead and make that one blue and come back to it in a little while. Let's see what else is happening here. So again, maybe we might start using the core methodology a little bit more, not that I haven't been doing it all along but see that was one I was watching and now it's got a credit it's got a quite a amazing tail lower so I don't know if I'm too excited about this one anymore but you can see I had an alert in place just in case it began to rally and that's the other thing too by the way using alerts and I have been a little consumed with these shit coins lately but I'm working to once I resolve some of the issues I'm working on then I'm gonna back off quite a bit and just let the chips fall where they may and trade as much as possible the core methodology. And again, as we're going through these, look at how many of these things are below the 30 EMA. Okay, AVA is a one AVA launch, XAVA. This is one that I'm still long, and right now it's a nice little TKO. If you were thinking about this as a setup in and of itself, and maybe I'm talking by position, but it's absolutely beautiful. Notice the nice little pullbacks before, thrust, pullback, thrust, pullback. This is just a really cool pair. In fact, I'm going to have to see how much I'm long because I'm free rolling. I think I'm going to do an add-on right above here. Let's put an alert in there. 
and we'll keep an eye on that one today and see what happens. In fact, I might even put in an order when I get through with this presentation. So you kind of get the idea. It was ugly overnight. Let the, let the market take you out. Get out the way. And then let's see how the chips fall. Let's see what else happens. And again, trade that core methodology might be the way to go. And let's just go through a few more of these. And again, everything I've been preaching, you can see, don't trade them if they're below the 30 EMA. Okay, that's rule number one. If you don't know anything about trading, remember, we're not trying to catch a bottom. We want to buy strength. Now, I'll show you one more thing, and then we'll take a look at that. Or let's go, uh, actually, I think I already showed you, but let's go back and look at, at Bitcoin one more time and just see where it is on a 30 EMA with a 15 minute, just to see if it's trying to turn a corner. You can see it tailed lower overnight. And this is uh, pretty ugly. And how's that for a, an oxymoron from a trend following more? Notice it went back down to almost 40, tagging these lows, or nearly tagging these lows way back here in October. So that's pretty darn crazy. But one thing that does scare me a little bit, by the way, is that all these asset classes, or most of these asset classes, or losing money. Now, that's a little scary. Now, I don't want to confuse the issue with facts. One of my doctor clients just sent me an article, and he's he's friends with an immunologist, a real immunologist, not an elected immunologist. Um, anyway, he says that, or it's it's my understanding from what he's trying to tell me that the, this Omicron variant, or however you say it, is a little bit overblown. And uh, but you don't want to confuse the issue with facts. You want to believe in what you see and not in what you believe. Anyway, here's the Bitcoin we talked about a second ago. Could make a 230 EMA breakout on the 15-minute chart. I don't know if I want to rush out and trade this, but it would be kind of fun to watch again for S and G's. So I think that's I think that's about it. I think it's time for the core methodology now. And that's it's a good thing in that you won't have to spend so much time on this. Just look for the patterns. Put your stop orders in. Go about your life. I guess the bad news is it's not nearly as exciting as buying the ones that are just going straight up. Getting that profit target in a few minutes. If you have any questions, you can reach me at DaveLeonard.com slash contact. Obviously, if you're on Facebook, just leave a comment. And you can also leave a comment on YouTube. I read and answer all those comments. Everybody enjoy the rest of your weekend and may the trend be with you.